This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We're in part 090, numerical methods. And in this video, we're going to look at how to take the derivative in MATLAB using the symbolics package. Like with the previous two videos, we are using symbolics. This does not come in the standard purchase of MATLAB. You need to make sure SIMS, the symbolics package, is purchased in MATLAB in order for it to work. The code will work or it can work in Octave, but similarly, you need to download the symbolic package and make sure it's loaded. I showed how to do that two videos ago at the beginning of that video. Link to the code used in this video, as well as more information about the symbolics package in Octave in this video's description. Before we get into the derivative, I want to show you what the diff function does in MATLAB. So I've got a vector v here with a few just arbitrary numbers typed into it, and I called diff on v. So diff is a built-in MATLAB function, and in Octave as well. And you can see my results right here. So I put in 1, 2, 10, 4, 5, and I got out 1, 8, negative 6, 1. See if you can figure out what the diff function does. Now I'm going to tell you in just a second here, so you know, pause the video if you need to, but take a look at it, see if you can figure it out. What diff does is it takes the difference between neighboring values in the input vector. So the first number 1 comes from 2 minus 1, the 8 comes from 10 minus 2, the negative 6 from 4 minus 10, and the 1 comes from 5 minus 4. And that's going to be relevant later on, but for now, I just want you to start thinking about diff. Because what we're going to see as I scroll down here is that when I pass a symbolic expression into the diff function, something very different happens. So I use sims to declare a symbolic variable x. I set y equal to a symbolic expression, this x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And then down below, I say y equals diff parentheses y. So I replace the old uh, expression in the variable y with this new one resulting from diff. And hey, I get the derivative. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and so on. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0, so that's not displayed out. But it's correct. At first glance, it appears that the diff function does two entirely different things. If you use it on a vector of numbers, it seems to take the difference, the subtraction between the numbers. And if you use it on a symbolic expression, it seems to take the derivative. Later on, we're going to see that those two things are very much connected. But let's look at some more examples of diff taking the derivative. Diff can take the derivative of trigonometric functions. So here I've got a cosine of x. What is the derivative of cosine of x? Well, it's negative sine of x. And of course, diff works on all the other trigonometric functions as well. I don't know why MATLAB decided to rearrange things, rearrange the terms in the order that it did. Sometimes it seems to put things in standard form, but here it seems to have put the sine of x just amidst the other terms. Let's take this a little further. Suppose we want to find the instantaneous slope at x equals 3. We want to find the slope at a point. A very common thing to do. So it's just a substitution. We use the subs function on the result we got from diff, replacing the x in slope with the value of 3. And then we use the double function to convert it to a numeric value. And then I display it out. What happens if our symbolic expression has more than one variable? So here I've got a symbolic expression with both x and z. Well, when I use diff on that, what I get is the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of x cubed plus z squared is 3x squared. We assume that z is not a function of x unless we have further information. So the derivative of z squared is simply 0. Now, if you want to take the derivative with respect to z, good news. It's very easy. You just say diff of whatever you're taking the derivative of, in this case y, comma the variable that you want to take the derivative with respect to. So in this case, comma z. So what's the derivative of x cubed plus z squared with respect to z? Well, it's 2z, because x is treated as a constant with respect to z, so it's just 0. The next section just verifies that the chain rule works when you use the diff function. So when I take the derivative of negative 5 cosine of 3 theta, what I get is 15 times sine of 3 theta. So I had a negative 5 out front. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. The negatives cancel. But then I should just have a 5 out front, except we have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 3 theta is 3. 5 times 3 gives us our 15. Also, I just used a multi-letter variable, like theta, as opposed to just x or y. That is a perfectly fine thing to do. If there is only one variable in the expression, the diff function assumes that that is the variable we are taking the derivative with respect to. 
There's a few different ways to take second and third derivatives and so on in MATLAB, and they're all pretty easy. One way to do it is to simply say diff parentheses what you're taking the derivative of, comma what derivative you want. So comma two for the second derivative, comma three for the third derivative, and so on. Now, you could also just nest them together. You could say diff of the diff of y to get the second derivative of y. So all these examples are just to say the diff function works to take the derivative of symbolic expressions. But let's go back to that original use of diff as in subtracting pairs of values in a numeric vector. Here I've got a vector of x values. I'm actually gonna change this slightly to make sure that they go in ascending order, but pretty much any vector of x values will do. This is gonna make a little bit more sense though if they go in ascending order. And I'm gonna take the diff of x, and I'm gonna put it into a variable named delta x. Now that's a big hint right there as to what I'm getting at in this section. So think about that for a second, any calculus students. So here's my vector of y's. Again, it's just arbitrary numbers that I typed in. I take the diff of y and I put it into a value, a variable named delta underscore y. And here's the punchline. When I take delta y and I do element y's division with delta x, what I get is a difference quotient. The change in the y's divided by the change in the x's is the difference quotient. And that's what I've acquired here. I've got a difference quotient for a variety of x values. You can imagine that my x and y values are points on some kind of curve, and I'm trying to estimate the instantaneous slope, or in this case, I'm actually calculating directly the average slope between a variety of points on that curve. And the limit of the difference quotient is the definition of the derivative. So that is why this diff function has these two, at first glance, seemingly unrelated abilities. So scrolling down to this next section, I really wanna convince you that this diff of the y values divided by diff of the x values is the difference quotient. So I've got this example right here that I'm gonna walk you through. I start off with a vector of x values from negative two to two with a step size of one, literally just five separate values. So that's my x vector. And then my y vector is those x values squared. And I'm using subplot to graph a variety of things in these, this single figure right here. I've got six different subplots. In the upper left, I'm graphing my vector of x and y's. It is a parabola, but it's only five points sampled on that parabola. And then in the upper right, I'm graphing a bar graph of the diff of the y values divided by the diff of the x values, a difference quotient. And at first glance, okay, it's just like a bar graph. It kind of looks like stair steps. It doesn't look like much of anything in particular. But then on my middle row of my graph, that was generated from the code on line 563 and below. I create a new vector of x values from negative two to two, but this time with a step size of a half instead of a step size of one. So twice as many points sampled on this parabola. So the middle left graph is my parabola again, looking a lot smoother than before. And my middle right is again, the diff of the y's divided by the diff of the x's. In fact, each of the three rows in my figure here, the only thing I'm changing is the step size of my x values. So on the third one, I change to a step size of 0.1. The parabola in the lower left is of course the smoothest of all the parabolas. And in the lower right, my bar graph is finally getting to the point that I'm trying to make here. If you look at the slope of the bar graph, what you will see is a line with slope two. It's literally y equals two x. Now, if you think to yourself, there's no way that line is steep enough to be 2x, well, check what the axis looks like, right? The x-axis is stretched a lot more than the y-axis, which makes it look shallower than it actually is. But what I'm showing here from top to bottom is that this is the limit of the difference quotient. I started off with a difference quotient with x values very far apart. I narrowed them in to half of their previous uh, distance apart and then one-tenth of their uh, initial distance apart. And I'm beginning to approach that actual slope of my parabola. The instantaneous slope at every single point is given by the line y equals 2x. So if you have data points, a y vector, an x vector, and you use diff in this fashion, you are calculating average slopes and if you can get even more detailed x values, you can sort of approach the true derivative. In any case, I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna wrap up this video right here. The very next video is going to show the antiderivative. It's gonna show some integrals that we can calculate in MATLAB, again, using symbolics.